What's going on, you guys? Terrell T. Crookshank here from Tom to Green Forest. Some presentation. Where I'm at right now in presentation, I'm with some words that were gave to me for my now once I was to get to the other side of my college graduation that, that I did last year, May 23rd, 2019. When I was in fourth grade, I moved away from my home state, California, and relocated and picked it back up in the fourth grade that placed two fours before me. Um, there's also the mathematics where you can have four and two because of four is being used twice. Pertaining to when I graduated college, I graduated at 42 years old. Again, in my holy homework, I find that these words were gave to me then for my now once I was to get to the other side of my college graduation. College already being in the picture during then. At the remembering of this moment of time, spiritually following these words to say, as B R N, pertaining to the area of whom got to the honey first, the B or the N. To say that the ant surely is going to get to the honey. But then there is the bees. Well, they create the honey. So they are already there before the ants get to it. The words being with no further delay. Right as if there must be a distinct motive for every action and that this must be associated with some pleasure or displeasure. But man seems often to act impulsively that is from instinct or long habit without any con consciousness of pleasure in the same manner as does probably a bee or ant. When it blindly follows its instincts, under circumstances of extreme peril, as during a fire, when a man endeavors uh, to save a fellow creature without a moment's hesitation, he can hardly feel pleasure and still has, and still less has he time to reflect on the dissatisfaction which he might subsequently experience if he did not make the attempt should he afterwards reflect over his own conduct he will feel he would feel that there lies within him an impulsive power widely different from a search after pleasure or happiness and this seems to be the deeply planted social instinct in the case of the lower animals, it seems much more appropriate to speak of their social instincts as having been developed for the general good rather than for the general happiness of the species. The term general good may be defined as the rearing of the greatest number of individuals in full vigor and health, with all their faculties perfect, under the conditions to which they are subjected, as the Social instincts, both of man and the lower animals, have no doubt been developed by nearly the same steps. It would be advisable, if found practical, practicable, to use the same definition in both cases and to take as the standard of morality the general good or welfare of the community rather than the general happiness but this definition would perhaps require some limitation on account of politician ethics. When a man risks his life to save that of a fellow creature, it seems also more correct to say that he acts for the general good rather than for the general happiness of mankind. No doubt the welfare and the happiness of the individual usually coincide and the contended happy tribe will flourish better than the one that is discontented and unhappy. We have seen that even that early period in the history of man, 
the expressed wishes of the community will have naturally influenced to a large extent the conduct of each member. And as all wish for happiness, the greatest happiness principle will have become a most important secondary guide and object. The social instinct, however, together with sympathy, which leads to our regarding the approbation and disprobation of others, having served as the primary impulse and guide. Thus the reproaches removed of land, the foundation of the noblest part of our nature in the base principle of selfishness. Unless indeed the satisfaction whichever animal feels when it follows its proper instincts and the dissatisfaction felt when prevented be called selfish. The wishes and opinions of the members of the same community expressed at first orally, but later by writing also, either form the sole guides of our conduct or greatly reinforce the social instincts such opinions, however, have sometimes a tendency directly opposed to these instincts. This latter fact is well ex exemplified by the law of honor. That is the law of the opinion of our equals. And not of all our countrymen. The breach of this law, even when the breach is known to be strictly according with true morality, has caused many a man more agony than a real crime. We re recognize the same influence in the burning sense of shame which most of us have felt, even after the interval of years when calling to mind some accidental breach of a trifling uh, though fixed rule of etiquette. The judgment of the community will generally be guided by some rude experience of what is best in the long run for all the members. But this judgment will not really err from the ignorance and weak powers of reasonings. Hence, the strangest customs and superstitions in complete opposition to the true welfare and the happiness of mankind have become all powerful throughout the world. We see this in the horror felt by a Hindu who breaks his caste and in many other such cases. It would be difficult to distinguish between the remorse felt by a Hindu who was yielded to the temptation of eating unclean food from that that felt after committing a theft. But the former will probably be the more severe. How so many absurd rules of conduct as well as so many absurd religions, beliefs have originated, we do not know. Nor how is it that they have become in all quarters of the world so deeply impressed on the mind of men. But it is worthy of remark that a belief constantly inculcated during the early years of life whilst the brain is impressible appears to acquire almost the nature of an instinct and the very essence of an instinct is that it is followed independently of reason. Neither can we say why certain admirable virtues such as the love of truth are much more highly appreciated by some savage tribes than by others. All right. With that spoken again, these are words that I find in my holy homework that was gave to me in that early life of mine there in fourth grade when relocated, moving away from my home state here, California, and that place in four twos before me. Well, we can do the mathematic and also get a four before the two because there are there is the number four being used twice. And this being the age that I was when I graduated 
college last year, 42 years old. With this again pertaining to the 2020 presidential elections, what come to mind is I was gave an alpha and I was gave an omega. The alpha being that day when my mother took me or was taking me to my pediatrician. And in that particular moment of time, I presented to my mother about me running for president someday in my adulthood years. And where she responded, what you're saying is you're going to go and graduate kindergarten and graduate elementary school and graduate junior high school and graduate high school and graduate college because this will help accommodate that positioning for such self. Come others and the betterment of America. And then I was gave an omega, this being the omega that I'm able to receive was gave from the God of all gods. All right, with this, I'm asking the Lord to bless this pre presentation, okay? Bless this presentation, Lord. Let it do what you may need to do, what you may want it to do in your son Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, you guys. Presidential um, 2020 elections has is coming to a close. Again, vote if we haven't got out there and voted yet, all right? Terrell T. Crookshank, who I am, running for president of the United States of America during the 2020 presidential elections. All right, you guys, till next time. Take it easy. Peace.